Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the querying tools we have available to us within ArcGIS Pro. So often when we're working within GIS, the data sets we have contain more data than we actually need. And there's a number of ways that we can kind of cut those data sets down in size. Uh, we could kind of clip them, for example, to a particular boundary, which actually I've already done in the case of the, the data sets up on my screen at the moment. But another set of tools we have available to us are the querying tools. And we actually have two sets of querying tools um, within GIS. We have a querying tool that allows us to select by attributes. So this allows us to use values within the attribute column of a particular layer to select a subset of features within that layer. Or we have select by location, which allows us to use additional layers um, to narrow down the features that we want by selecting only the features that fall within them or intersect with them um, or fall within a certain distance. So essentially using the spatial relationship between those layers to select a subset of features. So let's take a look at the select by attributes tool first of all. So I'm actually going to have a look at a roads layer, which you can see in black on my screen here and I've selected it in the contents pane. So when I click select by attributes, uh, it all automatically picks up under the input roads that I want to look at my road clip layer. Um, if I wanted to, I could drop down here and select any of my other vector layers to use instead. Selection type. So probably in most cases, you're going to want to create a new selection, but actually if we've already got some features selected, we can choose to add features to the current selection or even remove them from the current selection um, based on the query that we're about to run. And then we need to create the query itself. So I want to select features where, and first thing I need to do is to select an attribute field to base the query on. So in my case, I'm going to use the road classification. So this tells me whether it's a motorway, a major road, a minor road, a pedestrianised street, um, all of those kind of things. So I want to select features where the classification and the next thing we need to select is a logical operator. So again, probably the most common one is the one at the top of the list is equal to. So this allows me to select roads where its classification is equal to a particular value, and that could be a numeric value, or it could be um, a text value. So this works with, with all kind of types of, of attribute field. We can also use not equal to, uh, begins with, doesn't begin with, ends with, um, is null if we want to select kind of empty values. And if we're working with numeric fields, we've got less than, greater than, less than or equal to. So a whole range of operators that can help us select the particular features that we're interested in. So in my case, I'm going to go with where the road classification is equal to, and we could just type a value in here, but ArcGIS also helpfully looks at the particular field that we've selected and gives us a list of relevant values to select from. So first of all, I'm going to select all of the features where the classification is equal to motorway. And if I just move this to one side and hit apply, you'll see a small number of areas are now highlighted in blue. So these are the areas that have a classification of motorway, which actually isn't very much um, within my particular study area. So let's look to expand that slightly. We can actually add extra um, layers to our query by adding another clause. And we have, first of all, two options. We can either have and. So if I select and, then any features would have to be both a motorway and whatever I specify in this, this second clause. Um, so it's going to narrow down from my original query. Actually, in this case, I want to select some additional road sections. So I'm going to use the or option. So this means that whatever I put in this second clause, the, the feature only has to be either a motorway or whatever I put now. And what I'm going to put here is actually classification again, and this time add A roads. So I'm now going to select anything that's either a motorway or an A road. 
Um, if I put and, I wouldn't end up with any results because none of my features are going to be both a motorway and an A road because they're, they're different types of road. So if I click apply now, then you'll see that it's now expanded my selection. So I'm now selecting both the motorway sections and the A road sections, which for those of you who aren't familiar um, with UK roads, uh, A roads are basically the, the kind of the most major road below a motorway. Motorways are the biggest roads, A roads kind of are next in the, the hierarchy. So there you go. In a nutshell, that's how we carry out uh, a query based on attributes. So select by attributes. And I can then click OK. Those features are now selected and I can go on to export those or do other things based on, on that selection. So I'm just going to clear that now and look at the other option available to us, which is select by location. And actually, I'm going to turn my roads layer off and instead use a buildings layer. So with my buildings layer highlighted, I'm going to select by location. And once again, because I've got the buildings layer highlighted in my contents pane, it's already picked up input features um, as building.clip. So the input features are the layers that we want to select features in. And again, we could select multiple layers here. So we could select buildings um, and roads, for example. In fact, let's, let's, why not? Let's um, select features from both our buildings and our road layers simultaneously. Uh, I'm actually going to skip ahead a bit and then look at selecting features. So these are the features that we want to look at their relationship with. So the features we want them to be inside of or outside of or touching um, or within a certain distance of. So actually, I'm going to use uh, these features in blue here, which are actually a very kind of coarse resolution uh, flood zone layer. So my selecting features is going to be my flood zones. So I want to select buildings and roads that have some kind of spatial relationship with flood zones. And the, the final thing that I'm going to, to look at in detail is this option of the spatial relationship. So there are a whole range of spatial relationships that we could choose to look at. We can um, we could pick roads and buildings that contain a flood zone. Uh, which is unlikely to occur, so we're not going to go with that option. We could pick roads and buildings that are within a particular distance of a flood zone, and we can choose whether that's straightforward linear distance, geodesic, or 3D. Um, we could pick roads and buildings that are within a flood zone, which might make more sense, um, although a lot of our roads might not be fully within a flood zone. Um, they probably might just touch on it. Uh, we can have ones that boundaries touch, ones that have their center in. And remember that we can use these spatial queries to apply to points, lines, or polygon features. So which of these is most appropriate is partly going to depend on the data types that you're using. So I'm actually going to stick with the default option of intersect. So intersect basically means they touch um, the selecting features in some way. They could cross in and out again. They could be completely inside it. Um, they could just kind of touch on the on the boundary. Um, so it's kind of one of the, the broader selection of uh, selection options. If I said within a certain distance of, then I'd also need to set a search distance here. Um, for intersect, that's that's not applicable. And once again, we can choose whether this is a new selection, whether it's added to an existing selection, removed from an existing selection or so on. And I can then click apply. And we can see now, uh, oh, I turned the roads layer off, let me turn the roads layer back on, that now both roads and buildings that intersect with any of these flood zone layers um, have, have been selected. So obviously, if we were interested in, in looking at flood risk, um, then this would be quite a, a useful operation to undertake. And I can then click OK, and I'll have that selection. And once again, I can now take that forward to whatever steps I want to use next. So there we go. That's quite a kind of short, short summary. But hopefully that's given you an overview of the querying tools available to us within ArcGIS and how we can use them within ArcGIS Pro specifically, both attribute queries 
and spatial queries. So if you found that useful, uh, please do remember to like and subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos being uploaded in the near future. Thanks a lot.